What's good, Plum Borough? I'm Drew Barto. I'm Mike Devine. And together we are Sour Plums. We aim to entertain and educate more than three Plum residents by debating some of the trending topics in the borough, from school board and council happenings to business openings, conspiracy theories, and everything in between. Welcome to the Sour Plums podcast, friends. Glad to have you back for another episode. Mike, how you been? Pretty good. Just getting back from a long weekend at Penn State, watching some uh, middle school basketball. So I'm pretty tired, but ready to go. All right. Well, you know, I was really surprised by the slander of the BLT in the community after our last episode. I I can't believe there are that many people who are (laughs) anti-BLT in the Plum community. What was your response to that? Well, they knew what I've known on along, that I was right. <laughs> <laughs> no, we had people so, talking about it on our page. We had people talking about it. You had people talking about it at State College, right? I did. Actually, uh, State College, um, Alan, who who uh, we forgot to tell everybody his nickname last time. So Big Cat, uh, his, his wife was up at Penn State this weekend, and she was actually going on and on about liking BLTs and was going to get one for dinner just to spite me. Um, she ended up not getting it. But uh, yeah, I think a lot of uh, people agree that Bacon is an ornament meat. It's not a hearty sandwich. It is a, a dressing that you put to crunch up your sandwich and add flavor. It's delicious. I love it, but it's it's not a main meat for a sandwich. Just an outrageous claim, by the way. And I, I was so surprised at how many people backed you on that. But I will say this about Alan. Apparently, you married well. So I'll, <laughs> I'll give you that. If she's going to oh, be on I my side. I absolutely did. I absolutely <laughs> did. Yeah. And you know what, Mike? I do want to talk about the backing into a parking space poll that we had last week and also the response. I feel like there's a vocal minority on this that just killed me this week. Uh, you know, I, I had no idea that backing in was so popular in Plum. When cars had, became equipped normally with a backup camera, it changed the game for parking. It is so much easier to leave the spot seeing where you can go. Now, I sent you, well, I didn't send you, my wife sent you a picture this weekend. We pulled into a parking garage at Penn State and it said, no backing in. And she yelled at me like we weren't even doing anything. I was just minding my own business. It was, <laughs> there were angled spots. I was going to pull in and she goes, don't you dare back into this spot. So that's I where love we are. That. She supports me and she's also a rule follower. I appreciate that. <laughs> I, I do have a funny story that's going to actually hurt my cause. Uh, a parking lot across from where, where I live, someone was backing out of their parking space this week. My mom witnessed them back into a pedestrian, hit their arm. I'm laughing because I know they're not hurt. They were fine. Everybody checked on her. But, but it kind of supports your cause. She, and the person got out of the car saying, I wasn't even paying attention. I wasn't even looking. So it really supports your cause of backing in, pulling out. Uh, I wish I wouldn't have had that story happen, but it, it did. And I, feel like I felt like I needed to share it here today. Before we forget this week, Mike, what are you drinking? I am drinking tonight um, my second favorite bourbon. This is Woodford Reserve Double Oaked. Uh, it's it, it's a good smooth bourbon, little woody flavor. They they I, I'm not gonna pretend to know what double oak means. I just know that they put it twice in an oak barrel. That's all I know. That's why it's called double oak. But it's delicious. It's my favorite. Anything double oak is good. My second favorite bourbon. Nice. I am drinking the Two F K Double IPA from. Old Thunder Brewing, and that's in Blonox, and it's a great brewery. I have probably four or five favorites from there. Uh, you know, anytime I can get a good double IPA that uh, fills me up and uh, and is local, I'm I'm all for it. So again, I got this at uh, Old Thunder Brewery, but I got it at Salute, and they're not a sponsor yet. Yet, yet. All right, so we do have sponsors though, and, and I want to I want to thank them here today. This episode is actually brought to you by Tresco Concrete Continental Comb. And the Jen Mascaro team, she's a new sponsor, which I'm super happy to have. Thank you, Jen, for sponsoring. But we do have one a one show sponsor, and that's the Mario Francesco Corporation. He has a one so show sponsorship, isn't that right, Mike? One show sponsorship. So we're gonna uh, throughout the show name the different services he has been messaged for. I, I'm not gonna give any false advertising, so I won't say he fulfilled any of these, but he definitely has been messaged these from. Uh, being tagged on Facebook. So if you have a need for over 300 pumpkins being delivered to your house, uh, call Mario Francesco. He will get them there within 24 hours, undamaged. Continental Comb Barbershop, a traditional barbershop servicing the area since 1973. Up to date on all the new styles and cuts. Call 412-795-7555 and mention Sour Plums for $5 off any service. Tresco Concrete, the best concrete products on the market. Ready Mix Concrete delivered to your door, guaranteed to get hard or your money back. And as always, their concrete is all natural, no supplements, and always 100% Viagra free. 
The Gen Mascaro team proudly supports the Sour Plums podcast. When it comes to selling your home promptly and at peak value, look no further than the expertise of the Gen Mascaro team. With over a decade of industry experience, we guarantee to guide you seamlessly through the process. For personalized assistance, contact us at 412-607-6318 or email gen.mascaro at cbrealty.com. Welcome back, everyone, to Sour Plums Podcast. We're going to jump right into plum problems. Number one problem this week, uh, I've been seeing tipping become an issue. And I will say this. I am a very generous tipper. I start at 25% when I go out. But ever since COVID happened, tipping has been put in everywhere, right? It's not just when you go sit down for a meal, uh, when you get a cab, a haircut, whatever you're getting done, where you're, normal places you tip everywhere that you run your card, it seems, has an option. Would you like to add a tip? Starbucks, other little coffee shops, sandwich places. And if they're making me a BLT, they are not getting a tip. I'll tell you that much right now. <laughs> but when is it too much? I, I, I feel guilty. I feel guilted into doing it every single time. And I do it. Um, if it's something I don't think I should tip for, I'll usually go 15%, maybe 10 But when is it too much? I think that's what I, I would venture to, Mike. I don't, I don't see the problem. You can just not do it. But you're right. You do have that guilt, right? right. You, 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 you do. You walk with that guilt. You do get judged. Yeah. Um, and if you want to order your favorite BLT somewhere, you don't want it to be spit in the next time you order it because you didn't tip. That's right. that's that'd be a problem. I, I wouldn't have that problem, but right. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you said you're a generous tipper. I consider myself a generous. I, I'm a I'm a start at twenty percent kind of guy. You you could work your way up. You can certainly way work your way back. But even if you're bad, you're still probably getting ten percent from me, unless it's like. One time I had a, a woman spill water all over my table. Rather than help clean it up, she brought back a pile of napkins for my family to help to clean the water up. Like that was a 0% tip because <laughs> you, can't, you spill the water. People have bad days, right? So like I said, I start about 25%. You can work your way up or down. I try to make sure I leave something. If, if you're having a bad day, I get it. If you seem apologetic for it, I get it. I'm still going to leave you a tip. Um, but if you're if you're in a in a mood and you're not doing anything to correct it, if you make a mistake like spilling a glass of water and make me clean it, yeah, that's going to bring it down. But I do understand these people, especially in the restaurant business, depend a lot on tips, and I try to leave cash tips when I can. Just that's between them and the IRS, whatever they do. But uh, <laughs> I don't think it's a problem. It's just you got you got to get over your guilt if it's something you don't don't feel should be tipped for. But I mean, even the, I'm even the point where I'll tip. If I'm picking up an order, <laughs> if, I'm, if yeah. I'm doing most of the work, I'm still tipping. I mean, there's still people cooking in the kitchen. There's still people that need those tips. And, and I want to I help support them if I'm in a position to do so. Exactly. Now, now what, I'll differentiate that. So there's a larger, we'll call it a sandwich coffee shop. I don't want to say the name, but I want to give anybody any bad press. And, but we know that they, make, they don't make less than minimum wage. They make probably $15, $16, $17 an hour. Okay. Tipping is not part of their expected income but i still feel guilty into, into doing it so you and still I, do and it I, I do they're, they're, they're on the 10 percent side i do i still do it but i really don't i really don't want to am i a bad I think, person for that i don't think you're a bad person I mean, you're a bad person but not for that okay. <laughs> there are other there are other opinions you you have that no, i'm kidding but i think that's a great topic to throw out to our our sour plums facebook page but let us know like you guys feel guilted into tipping uh, where do you start? I know a lot of people don't want to admit what they start, where they start at tipping, but I think, I think for me, twenty percent is the starting point. It's always the starting point, and you work your way back or up from there. All right, moving on. We have, for the first time, I think in my lifetime, the Steelers have been overly active in free agency. Yeah, uh, we get rid of Mitch Trubisky. We get rid of Mason Rudolph. All of a sudden, Kenny Pickett's gone. Deontay Johnson's gone. So we went from a, a room of quarterbacks of at best second stringers, maybe third stringers, maybe a guy who should be somewhere working for a tip <laughs> to Russell Wilson and Justin Fields in a weekend. What, what, what happened there? What, what is this? I, I'm not saying I'm mad, but this is not the Steelers that I grew up with. Omar Khan's a completely different beast. I think that's, that's the number one thing there as the general manager of the Steelers. And I think he's making a lot of different decisions. Are we better? I think defensively we are. I think Patrick Queen was a steal. Uh, quarterback, I mean, if I'm looking at Russell Wilson from last year, Justin Fields from last year, as of right now, I'm saying it's a wash. But what I, I will say is I really do like the potential of Justin Fields. 
And I, I, I feel better about him being on the team than Kenny Pickett at this point. I think Kenny Pickett really pissed off a lot of the team captains. Cam Hayward, Minka Fitzpatrick, and TJ Watt were reported to have been pining for Russell Wilson to come to the Steelers. So if those three guys, potential future Hall of Famers, are saying, we want Russell Wilson, Pickett must have done something to piss them off. Like, I don't know, maybe choose not to dress for a game when he could have because he was butthurt that he wasn't the starter anymore. Yeah, and I, I think, too, Russell Wilson had somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 more touchdown passes than Kenny Pickett. Now, I know Kenny didn't play some games and he was hurt some games, things like that. But uh, if you look at where our defense held other offenses to and you add 20 touchdowns to those numbers, it's a whole different season last year. Absolutely. Completely different. So uh, my understanding is Justin Fields came in knowing he's the backup. It's Russ's job. And I mean, Russ has been around, what, 15 years now? It's, it feels like it's been forever. Uh, 14, 15? Yeah. yeah. Somewhere around yeah. there. And Justin Fields has been in the league, what, two or three years? He's because nice. this will be his fourth year, right? Fourth. I think it's his last year because he'll be a free agent after this year. Right. So he can, he can t- kind of take a step back, learn from a really good quarterback. In his prime, Russell Wilson was a really good quarterback, managed the field well, and now Justin can sit behind him, soak everything in, look at everything not as having the weight on his shoulders, but can come in in a year, maybe two years, let Russ kind of ride out and off into the sunset. And Justin Fields can be the quarterback that everybody thinks he could have been four years ago when he got drafted. I think, I think we are in contention for the AFC North this year. I think the defense puts us there automatically. We've got good running backs. We've got a, a number one receiver who, yeah, he pots a lot. But if they fill that up, Mike Williams is coming to, for a visit to the Steelers. So that'd be a good number two. If if he signs here, and I, I think though, Mike, at what point is what I want to know? At what point do you say, at what record do you say Russell Wilson has got to take a back seat to Justin Fields? Is it one and three? Is it zero oh and four? Where is that? Where does that happen? I think I'm looking more at his stats. Is he okay. throwing more more interceptions than than touchdowns? Is he making bad decisions? Is he overthrowing receivers? I'm looking more at that because is it his is fault? It, basically, is what you're saying. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Is, is he? Is he the reason that we're losing? So you, the defense could be the reason we're losing. Like he can be playing great, but we lose three games in a row because they let up forty points. Right, right. If, he, if he's putting up thirty and we're losing, it's not his fault. He's not doing anything wrong. All right, Jude, do you want to introduce this one? I think you put up a um, a Facebook poll, and we can jump into this this plum problem. Yeah, we have. Uh, I put up a poll, like, best sporting event in, in in the country, and it was. Really, a two event race between the Super Bowl, which finished number one. I think we did have 50 total votes. Uh, Super Bowl had probably close to 30. And then March Madness being number two. And I think I know where you stand on this because I, I saw your vote for the Super Bowl. Uh, so let, let, me, let, let me understand why your favorite is the Super Bowl, and I'll let you know why March Madness is mine. So I think the NFL does it right. You have 14 total teams come in and they play. You had to earn your spot there, right? Like mm-hmm. we know the college football playoffs are crap. There is my least favorite event of the year. I hate the way they pick it. It's going to change this year, so we'll see if that changes. But your regular season means something. You get in, and like the Steelers showed us in what oh five or oh eight, you can be the last seed. But if you're hot, you're hot, and it yeah. gives everybody, it gives everybody who earned that right to play for the Super Bowl. Everything leading up to the Super Bowl, the media attention. Um, everything that goes into that week, the halftime show that we talked about a few weeks ago, it's just a spectacle. That being said, day one and two, the opening round of March Madness is one of my favorite things to watch. It's one of my, two of my favorite days of the year because I get to sit there and watch sports all day long. You have your Cinderella stories. You have, you know, the, we had a 16 beat a one seat a couple of years ago for the first time ever. Um, we always have our 12, 12 upsets, fives. Uh, it's, it's just great. Like it's great moments, but by the time we get to the end of the first weekend going into the sweet 16, to me, it's kind of lost. It's, it's a lore and I still watch it. I still want to know who won. I, I love sports, but the Super Bowl, everything building up to that one moment. And we usually have more times than not, we have a good game to watch a good football game. Uh, and the, the commercials even are, they're, Everybody talks about the commercials the next day. It's just everything. The Super Bowl for me is the number one sporting event of the year. 
And I get it's, it's the Super Bowl. Even the playoff run is, is good. I, I don't care so much for everything surrounding the Super Bowl. I just I enjoy the game. I mean, yeah, the commercials, uh, sure. Yeah, the halftime show, okay. But that's not primarily what I'm there for. I'm there for the sporting event itself. And for me, the first four days of March Madness, uh, rounds one and two, are the best. It's the best event in sports. From the nine, time I was nine or ten, I was I was skipping school to watch the Thursday and Friday, the first Thursday and Friday. Of the, the tournament right i was getting hopped up on mountain dew but you know we had those twist off caps on mountain dews and pepsis where you twist off a team you could see a team name on those you remember those that was so much fun you'd always get somebody like moorhead state you'd chuckle as a kid i still chuckle i'm 40 i chuckle at moorhead state by the way they made the tournament this year but you get you get moorhead state but you never get duke and as a kid i didn't realize why i wouldn't get that now as an adult i understand that <laughs> they only printed one duke and they printed 300,000 more head states. But I, I would get hopped off Mountain Dew, watch that all day long, and then do it again Friday, and then do it again Saturday, and then do it again Sunday, and then I'd be functioning. By the time I got to high school, my teachers knew Drew was not going to be in school Thursday and Friday to open March Madness because there just it wasn't going to happen. I'm not going to be. And now I can take off and get paid to watch March Madness. So it's beautiful. So I'm not going to be going to work this week on Thursday and Friday. And I'm actually going to the tournament because it's in Pittsburgh this year. It's my favorite thing to do with my son, other than watch him play basketball, is to go to March Madness wins in Pittsburgh. Thursday, all day long. We'll be there till midnight, 1 a.m., and then we'll do it again Saturday. It's the best event by far for me. So I would love to go to it in Pittsburgh. And every time it's been here, I have not had a chance to make it. I will not make it again this year because I have quite possibly the coolest wife in Pittsburgh. For her 40th birthday, she said, I said, what do you want to do? Let's go on a trip somewhere. She said, yes, let's go to Vegas for their opening opening round of March Madness. And I said, in. Nice. So that, which is why we're recording tonight and not Thursday, because I leave <laughs> Tuesday morning <clears throat> to go to Vegas for March Madness. So we already have our whole day Thursday planned out. Um, we're going to go to the sports book in our, in our hotel. Uh, we have seats reserved already, like the nice, comfy, big, cushy chairs. Uh, we have brunch reserved with in the, in the tap room with all the TVs. So we're ready to go, uh, ready to hopefully win some money while we're there. But I think, like I said, it's it's one of it's one of my favorite events of the year. Doesn't top the Super Bowl, but it's it's up there, especially especially the opening round. I love it. I don't know. Being in Vegas might might change your uh, opinion. It might make it your number one after this week. It's, it's going to yeah, be a great we'll time. See. Yeah, we'll <laughs> definitely see. Well, I get I get the Super Bowl as a single standalone one day event. Uh, I'll give you that. But I just love the days of it. Even lately, there have been some more teams that are lower seeds have made it to the second weekend which does make it more interesting. Typically, it's been the Blue Bloods, and that's why I don't like the college football playoff, the top four teams. It's, I'm, not, I'm tired of watching Georgia versus Alabama every year or Clemson or whoever it might be. Uh, but now I think the fact they're expanding that to 12 teams next year, I believe it's 12 teams, that'll be a lot more fun too. So that, that, might, that might mirror March Madness, but I just love basketball. It's, it's my passion because my, my son loves it. So it's, it's become my number one passion. Yeah, and I, I, one thing I don't, I don't like about March Madness is a couple, couple years ago, they started to bring in the play-in games, which I think is great. That gets a few more teams in. Yeah. <clears throat> but why are the play-in games not all 16 seeds? If you weren't good enough to make the top 64, why are you coming in at, what, a 7 or an 11? Uh, this um, year, really, last year was 11s. This year, I was surprised it was 10s. It was all 10s. 10s and 16s. Yeah. 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 So I, I wish it was I, – I, I like when things make sense. If it doesn't make sense, it just annoys me, and it doesn't make sense. <laughs> But real quick, I want to give a shout out to uh, Mario Francesco painting. Not only could he paint the inside of your house, he can paint the outside of your house. And if your family sits, he can do a mural for you as well. He's a jack of all trades. We've, we've learned that about Mario. Master of none. All right, Drew, tell us what's good in the hood. Mike, I couldn't be more excited for our good in the hood guest today. He's doing a lot for youth basketball in the greater Pittsburgh area. And he can help our plum ballers with private skills training. Please welcome to the show, former Pitt Panther star point guard, Carl Krauser. Carl. Thank you for joining Sour Plums. Always love. Thank you, Sour Plums, for having me. I see you guys are engaging in, in, in Zoom in your community, and I love it. I just put my son, Satavian, we're trying to put him to sleep right now. He's two. So you know it's, you know how that gets difficult back then. So, hey, thank you all for having me again. It was Selection Sunday today. Now, we're going to air this a little bit later, but Selection Sunday. What's your response to Pitt not making and Virginia getting in? What's going on? Oh, my goodness gracious. I'm a little disappointed in the committee. I am, you know, Pitts had a great season. They bounced back. You know, I believe they had a 21 win season. And uh, there are a lot of schools that, um, you know, they haven't had, they haven't had it, uh, the same amount of success as Pitt. 
you know, and it's just, it's rough for those young fellas to feel like that. It's rough for, uh, for the coaching staff to feel, you know, the way you feel and, you know, being introduced to the NIT, you know, these guys have been working very hard throughout these months, you know, in the beginning of the season. So, and, and for, for, you know, all that hard work to feel like it's been thrown out the window sometimes, it's hard to stomach. It's hard to stomach, but you always still have to continue to stay strong and stand up and play. You know, as a baller, you got a ball. This is your job, champ. I don't want you got to knock it off. You got a ball. Look, hey, everybody, you are inspiration when you're out there. You're a celebrity when you're out there. You're being watched on certain national program channels that are broadcasting you and exposing you to different people. So you know there are kids looking up to you from every standpoint, every age. And there's people that are, you know, one foot in, one foot out. Some people are just balling all the way. You know, you can actually make and break somebody by watching them play. So when you're watching the Pitt Panthers, when you watch me, all I wanted you to do is believe in yourself and stay hungry, you know, and fight. You know, you got to fight. So when, when you, you, you see stuff like when Pitt's not getting in, it's like, all right, that's just another part of the disrespect. You know, we, 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 we're, we're not unfamiliar with the disrespect of our program with some of these people in the committee. We had to fight. You know what I mean? We had big wins against UConn and these guys when they had, and, and you know, when they had, um, even when they had Ben Gordon, you know, even when they had Okafor, they had different guys. We had to still fight to get in, and we had 20-plus win seasons. So I know how rough it can be, and I know how frustrating it can be. But if you're presented another opportunity to play basketball, you have to play basketball. Yeah, no, you're no stranger to the tournament. I, I we were talking about this a little early in the episode. I call this the the best sporting event in in the world, right? And for me, and you, you're no stranger to it. You played in four of them and a handful of games. What was your what was your most uh, memorable moment for the tournament? Oh goodness, blessings <laughs> of the Lord. That was amazing, right there. Um, we I had a few. You know, um, I wanted to play. I wanted to play against Jameer Nelson. You know, and and I just kept hearing that 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 talk. St. Joseph's, about right? Being good, yeah. St. Joseph's yeah. with Delonte West and those guys. You know, mm -hmm. they're kind of in our region area. You know, so I used to dominate the regional area, and I'm just like, you know, but this guy's pretty good from outside of Philly. He's pretty good. You know what I mean? And I always wanted to play against him. And I'm remembering that sweet six going that sweet sixteen game against Oklahoma State and and uh, Tony Allen and those guys and and John Lucas and those guys, you know, and it was one of them, my man Ivan, it was so frustrating not to win that game yeah. because I, it's like sometimes it's like you're, you're doing the most you can and, and it's like, hey, in these games, I'm talking about the respect. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I'm talking about the respect of hit. Other people have it in their head already that, look, it's going to be Oklahoma State and somebody else. You get what I'm saying? They don't care. It's, it, they don't care about Pitt fighting hard. They don't care about what we've done. They don't care about Big East wins. They don't care. Mm -hmm. They, they, you, you got to prove it on the court. And then when you prove it on the court, when you have to go against referees, you have to go against other, everything else. It makes it harder. But at the same time, you always want to be prepared. So those, that was one of my most memorable games there, like Oklahoma State, just because we were playing in front of. My dad, my brother, my mom, we were in New Jersey in the Meadowlands, you know what I mean? Spike Lee was sitting right next to my mom and them. He came over and talked to my mom and dad and told them, you know, we can't wait till your son comes to the Knicks. I was blown away by that. My dad and mom were sitting next to, Co I mean, uh, uh, Chancellor Nordenberg at the time. I don't know if you remember Chancellor Nordenberg, you know what I mean? And the Chancellor was right there, him and his wife. They were so cool every time I'm seeing them. So I'm, they right there, and I could see them cheering for me. I'm like, I want to get this for them too, you know what I mean? It means a lot. Because you remember, I went and ran across the street after English class, after out of cathedral to the chancellor to get Jamie Dixon the job. So I pled my case in a very convincing way and let him know this is what we need. But hey, that's one of the uh, one one of the uh, memorable moments in being as a, a freshman playing with Brandon Knight, Jerron Brown, you know Chevy Troutman, Julius Page, and the fellas. You know I used to help Brandon and those guys when I was a red shirt freshman and those guys. I wanted all of them to learn and think the game different. And don't play the game the same way you just had to, you know, just previously last year. You have to change up, you know. So I was helping Brandon on his confidence with his dribble and his decision making. And I was helping Jerron on different things in his defense. I was helping different people, Julius Page, with his confidence and other stuff. So I say that to say this. When we went down there to Boston and we played against Indiana, we played Wagner first, and I'm telling you, this was like coming to America, man. 
I felt like Prince Hakeem. I'm talking about, dude, it was bananas. <laughs> I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, to feel the tournament, man, when you put those shoes on and go dancing, boy, that excitement in your body is something different. You hearing music and you don't even know what's going on. There's no music playing. You are so hyped. They're, they're, look, we had police escort on the motorcycles, front and back on both sides. They was looking like chips. It was like a bunch of chips. The guy looked with the bike the most. I was looking around. I was like, my mom used to watch this show. I like this show, too. Look at my man. So anyway, all you hear is the sirens. We driving through Boston with the big thing. I felt like we was in the Olympics in the 90s. You know, when when you got uh, Barkley, when you got uh, my man uh, Magic Johnson, Jordan, and those guys looking off the bus, and you see all these people, they, they, they knocking on the window, they banging on. I'm like, what is going on? Now, that experience right there was bananas. Going under the Boston train station and arena with Larry Bird was giving people buckets. Kevin McHale with those guys giving people buckets. That blew me away. So then we get into the game, and I'm actually having success in introducing the world to the Bronx sign, the X. And I'm screaming and doing this. But it, 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 you know, thank you, brother. And you know, you got the commentators. I listen to the game. He's talking about, oh, the little Harley Nickerson. Harley Nickerson. I'm like, man, look, I don't know who that is, but I bet that guy was animated. You get what I'm saying? Salute to him. Facts. Because I'm like, look, you got to play the game with this energy. And in a tournament, this is your time to shine. And you don't want to let not one moment, not a little bit, slip by. You don't want to. You want to enjoy this every second of it. This is the NCAA tournament. Most people never get a chance to experience in their life walking in. You get the pin. They put the pin on you. Oh, it's different. You stamp now. You know, so it's just a lot of different things you think about riding in a little caddy car to go do the interviews after a win. That is that that right there is special. Waving to the fans, seeing all of the fans that flew in, spent money for the in the hotel. Look, I'm talking to the fans before the game. I'm giving the fans love. We sign an autograph. I love talking to the fans because look, they don't have to come do this. They're coming out and spending their own personal money. You know, they could they could do something to their kids and that family. They're coming to watch us and enjoy winning. They love winning. So that's what you do. That's how that's how winning is so much contagious. It's so crazy. They want to people want to come be a part of winning. They want to be around you. They want to come support you. And I love the pit fans for always supporting us and being there for us. And thank you so much. It's always H2P. It's always hell of pit. And thank you to the zoo. I love you. Oh man, the, the, the energy is uh, contagious, Carl. <laughs> now I want to I want to talk about talk about energy. You were uh, this winter. You worked as the uh, color analyst for the for twenty two the point covering Whippeo basketball games, right? And yes. I, I listened to some of your games, and I'm, my 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 son's going to ninth grade at, at Plum, and I and I expect you to cover some of his game his games in the future if you're still doing it. <laughs> what what led you to do that? What, what led you to get that gig? And and, and and do you enjoy that? I love it. I love it so much. And to answer the first question, um. It, it was a assist, you know, Damon Zaslo asked uh, Julius Page, who do you think would be a good fit for this, you know, and uh, for that position? And uh, he said, Carl, <laughs> like, you know, Carl, like a lot of people know me for being very colorful, you know, very animated. Not you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm really quiet, but people don't know I'm really quiet, man. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a church mouse, man, you know, but when I'm, when I'm around the game of basketball, oh, my great goodness, it brings something out of me, this different passion and energy I have for it because – I have a different appreciation for it. I've come from a different place. I had to fight. I'm talking about almost died. I told people about the gunshots. I almost got shot during the move in the, in the park. I almost got shot in the projects. You know, you almost get chased and shot after games. You know, I had to run on the highway. So I appreciate the game of basketball. I appreciate where it's taking me. I appreciate what it's done for me and the people that it's introduced me to. So yeah. when it's like, man, you, you get a chance. I'm like, man, I had to fight the stuff where people – People don't want to respect you, so you have to make them respect you. And that's what those kids are doing. They they had to go get exposure. They're playing at these schools. They're fighting for their life. They're fighting for a scholarship. You get what I'm saying? They're fighting for their grades. You know what I mean? They're fighting for spots on the team to get more minutes. They need this exposure. So I know back in the day when we used to watch past, um, basketball, I used to see these people, man, these commentators, so negative towards the kids. They were so negative. Now I'm like, man, look, and some of them were so boring. Just, just keep it 100 it was so boring watching these guys, man. It was like, knock it off, buddy. I'm, I'm falling asleep here. I heard some people say, look, we used to watch the games on mute, okay? And then some people, I'm like, wow, you watch the game on mute? That's amazing. I'm just saying it's hurt. So when you hear people say and, and give you compliments, 
on, you know, just being a positive person towards the kids, you know, just always trying to uplift the kids, just calling the game how you see it, you know, just keeping it simple, but at the same time, keeping it energetic, keeping it, you know, help, helping people understand the passion and energy that's in the flow of this game. You know, and they, these kids should hear somebody scream their name like this. They should hear somebody want to hear to see them get a scholarship. You know how hard their parents work? You know how hard these kids work? You know what I mean? Like, just, 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 like, just push this under the rug. Like, this is a brush. Like, these are human beings, though. These are human blue-collar people, man. They are really getting up every day, going to work, providing for their family, and then inspiring their family to want to do more after being tired. So, you know, it's just never – sometimes there's no breaks. There's no days off. So when, when I seen the, not, the opportunity, I said, man, you know what? I would love to because I feel like – all I'm going to do is give them love. All I'm going to do is try to expose them and talk about them. All I'm going to do is put them on my, you know, YouTube channel, Carl Krauser, you know, and all I'm going to do is try, try to uplift them, you know what I mean, and just try to give them more exposure. All these different coaches that I know, all these different people that uh, people I know, I want them to have that. I want them to have that platform to share for them. That's why I say respect my journey because I want to respect everybody else's journey. It's about these kids getting somewhere to play, getting an education. That's why it's called being a student athlete. You get what I mean? So they deserve a chance. I think there's so many schools out here too, right? It's like 90 million universities now. You can, you, you can make up your own university if you have enough money and then put a team together. It's just crazy. So give the kids the exposure. Give them the good energy and positive energy they need, you know, and, and let them rock. So you're, you're saying about the things that you do for the kids to get them exposure, but what can they do for themselves? We have, we have a lot of young up-and-coming basketball players. We have some good teams coming up through Plum that – they're going to want to play through high school and into college. So what can they do for themselves to get that exposure? What you can do is make your workout videos, but first work on the things that make you special. The things that make, that made you gain the attention of your coaches, of your fans, of your peers. You get what I'm saying? Stick to your strengths. So when you're sticking to your strengths, you're only enhancing that part of your talent and your ability. So now you can chill out with that and then work on some more stuff. So you always want to just keep adding things to your game. That way, every year, every month, every week, somebody is saying, hey, this person is getting better. Hey, she's getting better. He's getting better. That's what people want to see, the positive progress. They want to see you fighting. You know what I mean? If they see you not caring, they're going to see the kid come back the same way they were last year. You give me no improvement. They didn't sit low on defense before. They're not sitting low on defense now. You know what I mean? They come out with their hands up. They come down their hands down. You get us here? And they go, hey, it's going to be the same thing, you know? So you don't want to have that repetitive negative motion, that repetitive negative type of, type of um, you know, bad type of uh, vibes with you. You know, it's just that stigma is just bad. People don't want to give you minutes. They don't want to give you a scholarship. They're not going to believe in you. They're not going to say, hey, he or she should be, uh, should be a leader or a person on my team or a role player. So what you also can do, like I said, with the videos, after you get, you know, you, you work in your game and you're progressing, send those videos out to these universities that you want to go to. You know what I mean? Find out, get the information and the names and number, email all these coaches, these head coaches or these assistant coaches too. Don't forget about the assistant coaches. They are a part of the team. I'm just saying. So talk to your assistants. Talk to these guys. Try to talk to the secretary. Try to get a feel for how the university is. Try to get a feel for how the coaches. Before you want to go to that university, you got to see what's been going on first. You know, you got to check your history. Do your research. Always do your research. And last but not least, if you want to do anything to help yourself, trust in God and believe in your family. If you don't believe in your family and the people that's trying to help you get somewhere, it's going to be a rough, rough, tough road. If you think you know more, it's going to be a tough road. So the best thing to do for yourself is always be receptive to different knowledge. Always be receptive, you know, because that's going to help you be a coachable person. And then after playing basketball, guess what? You're going to be a great team player in the corporate world or somewhere else, you know, making some money or having your own business. And you're going to know how to treat people as well. So that rolls over to you being a great business person and a great leader and a great boss. This is what we all want to be, a boss. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, who wouldn't want to be a boss? I'm just saying. So kids out there, please just work hard. Work smart, and please keep continuing to work on your game. You have to work on your game. If you're thinking you could just show up to games and it's just going to be okay, you're going to get better like that, it's not going to work like that. I stayed hours in the gym, and when I was at Pitt, I slept in the gym. 
I slept in the gym so much from the field house, the security guard taught me how to turn the lights off. I'm just saying, this is how much Coach Howell used to tell me not to go back in the gym at nighttime. And I go back in at 3 o'clock in the morning anyway. I got to get shots. I'm just saying, so this is what you do, man. You have to be a gym rat and appreciate the game and appreciate what it's going to do for you and believe in your future. Trust in a better tomorrow. I sent Lily away too soon. She should have stayed and listened to that part. I'll have to play it back for her hey, later. Hey, Mike, you're being a great dad, man. <laughs> she can listen to this on a replay. You agree to great dad. You got to the bed at a good time. Hey, well, speaking of, of dad, my, I, my son's name is Xavier, so with an X. Oh, I wanted to get okay. the blessing tonight from you, Carl Krauser. Can he put up Bronx X when he hits a three in plump? Please and thank you. I would love it. The reason I throw up the Bronx, too, is for the Bronx and also for people that have love for the Bronx and myself. So if whoever throws up the X, I'm on it. I'm blessed. You know what I mean? It's a, oh, man, you don't even know what it does to me. I get this feeling inside. You got my dimple showing. It's going crazy here. <laughs> I'm happy, man. You know, it feels good because... Sometimes people don't know. You know how Jay-Z throws this up and other people throw certain things up. These are iconic type of dishes. Certain people don't have that. You're known by this. This is your stamp. You get what I'm saying? So all of these people out there, you have to respect yourself because you are your brand. So every time you walk outside, you understand you represent yourself to your family every day. So do a great job representing. He's going to love to hear that. I've been talking to him about it, but now that he has your blessing, he's going to do it. Let's go, X! Throw that X up, baby! Let's go, X! Yeah! It's always love, brother. You've given a lot of good advice tonight, but what I really want to end this with, this segment with, and I want to cut you too short, but I want to end this segment with, how can the people of Plum get a hold of you for maybe private trainings and work with you? How can, how can they do that? Where can they find you? For the good people of Plum and everybody in the world, please and thank you. If you want to join Respect My Journey Training, please. My first name is Carl, C-A-R-L, last name Krause, K-R-A-U-S-E-R. The number 81 at gmail.com is my email. Please send your emails there. Contact me on Instagram or Facebook, Carl Magic Krause. On Twitter, Carl BX Krause. Look me up on TikTok, Carl Magic Krause. However you want to do it, I'm here. I'm available. I'm ready to get your kids Better. I want to help them with the through positive progress. Through my training, you will see my high energy on that court, and I'm going to make sure you're going to be like, you're going to see your kids' improvement that day. I guarantee it. What do you say, Charles Buckley? I guarantee. Hey, knock it off. Carl, that's awesome. Thank you so much for joining us, Carl. Uh, thank you. I appreciate y'all, man. Everybody, please go subscribe to my YouTube channel, Carl Krause, man. And thank you all, man. Everybody on this panel, man. From my man, Alan. Drew, Mike, Justin, you know I love you to the zoo. Everybody, Pittsburgh, the whole area, the whole world, New York City, the Bronx, stand up. Let's go, Bronx. they knock it off. Respect my journey. Thank you so much, Carl. Really appreciate it. Easy, fellas. Y'all have a safe and blessed night. All right. That's some energy there. Woo. Just nice. met him. I love that guy. Nothing has changed. Is. Nothing has changed in 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That was, that was, that was, that was, he was super high energy though, man. That was great. And it's 1030 at night. He was still that high energy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All hey, right. Drew, do you want to give a quick shout out to uh, Mario Francesco baking? He will make you a cake. It won't look good. It won't taste good, but he'll make it. <laughs> <laughs> Jack of all trades, master of none. <laughs> Mario Francesco. <laughs> Unreal. I'm glad he sponsored us, though. I do appreciate that, Mario. All right. So Justin, Justin's sitting here just listening, but I think he could just be part of the show now, right? He could, he could do these <laughs> next two segments with us. At this point, we should probably introduce that he's here. Everyone, <laughs> all, all of our hundreds of Sour Plums fans would like to welcome Justin Newman to the show, who's been here for our Carl Krauser segment. But we want to introduce him and let him uh, join in on the, the fun games here at the end of the show. Thanks for having me, Sour Plums. Good to be here. <laughs> so th this does not count as Justin's official visit because Justin does a lot of good stuff in the community. So I think we need to get him on for yes. real at some point. But but you're here listening, so you can you can help us out with these next couple segments here. I mean, Mike, I think it's time for Would You Rather, right? It is. Let's do it. All right, it's a good one. It's a moral one. <laughs> Love morals. All right. Would you rather get rich doing something that disappoints your family, or make just enough money to live? Good thing about me, Mike, is I can disappoint my family and make just enough money to live. So I can cover both. <laughs> I if you had to choose. In both. <laughs> if so I, let, let, <laughs> let, let's put this caveat out there. When I say just enough to live, like you're eating, paying your mortgage, you have clothes, but you're not doing anything fun. It's Oof. bare minimum. Is, 
literally you're making enough to live. I wish I had that uh, preparation for the show. I might have changed my two. I, th- I thought I could at least take have my son play AAU basketball, but I guess that's off the table. Um, yeah, I mean, he needs to get mm. a job, I think. <laughs> yeah, he totally does. I'll give you that <laughs> as much as it costs. I don't know, Mike. I, I really I, I tossed over this one. I, I, I feel like anybody at this point with social media can do something to disappoint their families and try to make more money. I think that's kind of a goal of a lot of people. And I, I got to tell you, as many people think that that's easy to you know, attain, it's still not right. You can, you can straight up embarrass yourself or disappoint your family and end up with nothing or less than nothing. So I think it's risky. It's risky to even do that. So I, for me, I do prefer to be able to, you know, go to sleep at night, feel good about myself, feel good about what I'm doing. So I'm going to take the route of just make enough money and not do something to totally disappoint my family and alienate everybody. Uh, you know, become a grifter and take advantage of people who, who, uh, you know, might be a little bit less intelligent than myself. I don't, that's not my path. I, I like to be able to sleep well at night. And I think that's where I would go. See, I, I kind of thought the same thing. And then I started thinking about the loopholes. I like, I like a good loophole. Yeah. Just cause you disappoint your family doesn't mean it's wrong. Right. True. So if it's, if it's a, if it's a legit living and you're, you're making good money doing it, they just don't approve of it. I think I'm still okay with it. Like, like Give if I started my own, do you have an example, Mike? I do. If I if I started my an OnlyFans page, mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't ha- I wouldn't make a lot of money potentially. I would probably have to pay people just to watch it. But <laughs> if I made an OnlyFans page, that's disappointing. I don't, I don't know who wants to watch an overweight middle aged white guy do whatever whatever people are paying to see me do. Not a huge market for that, but, I believe. Not a huge market. But if there was and I did it, my family would be highly disappointed. But we'd be living well. Yeah, I guess. I guess the question would be: Would you still have your family? I don't Is think they're the leaving question? me. I don't think they're okay. leaving me. I think they're okay. just highly disappointed in what and what I'm doing. Okay. I, I I enjoy the toys I have. I was up at Penn State this weekend, and I and Jess got me a cooler for Christmas. It was it's a Penn State truck with a remote control, and this is a huge flex, right? This guy came up to me in the in the atrium, and he said word for word, he said, "Just so you know, you are the envy of every able bodied man in this room right now." And I said, "I know," and that's the kind of stuff I like. I really enjoy that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I know I can't bring any of that stuff with me when I'm gone, but I, I. You like your toys. I like my toys. And more money, more toys, right? Exactly. Can't bring your money with you, but you can enjoy it while you're here. Uh, yeah, it's, it's. I'm not. I'm not sold on my answer, Mike. If I'm being honest, and I and I, based on the last episode, regardless of what I say, I'm going to have a vocal minority just destroy me on right. our on our Facebook page and, and in public. <laughs> And so I don't know. I'm I'm still I'm still gonna stay there just to be devil's advocate. But I I get it. I get the person who wants their toys. I'm just more of an experience type guy. But I guess money helps with experiences too. So it does. Justin, you, you've been quiet. But so I know you have a good moral compass. But where are you, you at? Do. But I also like a good loophole as well. So I'm going to go <laughs> with. I disappoint my kids every day because I embarrass them by doing stupid shit all the time. But guess what? I don't care. I'm still going to enjoy myself and enjoy life. So I'm going to take the, I'm going to disappoint my family. We're going to be living big and living large. And I'm going to buy more sneakers. Oh, geez. He just, he convinced me. Damn it. He embarrassed me. <laughs> We're having some brews talking about my amazing collection of like six pairs of Jordans. And <laughs> Justin's like, that's child's play. It just embarrassed me. Um, so yeah, I'm convinced I'm going to go, I'm going to go live with Justin. We're going to be, we're, we're going to disappoint our families and other families while we're at it. And we're going to have a great shoe collection. We're going to have fun doing it in our sneakers. That's right. <laughs> Big cat. We, we can't all agree here. So you, you got to bring us back around. Are, are, are we wrong? I feel like Big Cat's our moral compass. I feel uh, like he is. Guys, what is it? What is the other one? Live just by the skin of your teeth. I'm much more long term, big picture. So I know what my kids are going to remember and I want it to be positive. I don't want to disappoint them to the point where, okay, we have tons of money, but man, I'm not going anywhere with dad. I'm not, I'm not doing things with dad. Like he sold out. He sold out for a big paycheck, did something that would disappoint us that he probably thought of beforehand. And long term, yeah, times are tough, but they're still looking me in the eye, I guess. I'm not trying to double down on your statements, but that's what I'm thinking, at least. Alan, the producer yeah. slash moral compass of Sour Plums. <laughs> <laughs> I bet your son likes that drip you buy him, though, if you had some more money. <laughs> that's why I'm broke. <laughs> that's why I'm broke. <laughs> his, his son was here on uh, Friday when, when my uh, new G- Jordan 
slides came in and he was like, those are nice. So <laughs> I, don't, I don't know when his birthday is big cat, but Jordan, Jordan hydros. <laughs> oh, well, we know he picks them out. I'm wearing the same pair of Crocs from last uh, vacation from the Croc outlet. He's got Panda Dunks, um, Jimmy Choo's. He's got. He's got a tech, tech sweatsuit. He's got a tech sweatsuit. Well, see, you he's can disappoint enough. him and then just buy his love. You're not going to sway me, Mike, with your OnlyFans <laughs> and your toys. I heard you. You'd subscribe. Don't know what I'm going to do with his OnlyFan. I'm really into toys. Yeah, Mike wouldn't be OnlyFans. Well, it It'd be OnlyFan. He'd have one. Only fan. <laughs> I'd, ha- I'd have four. I'd still wouldn't be the worst followed thing in Plum. <laughs> Oops. Should we move on? <laughs> we should, but you know, if you need your chair to be caned, call Mario Francesco. He can cane it. <laughs> what the hell is chair caning? I have no idea. <laughs> Mario does it. I saw it. I've seen it on Facebook. <laughs> Thank you, Mario, for sponsoring this episode. All right, Drew, is it time to drop the grammar hammer on the people of Plum? It is, Mike. And this is more of a PSA. It's a it's a quick one, a segue into another topic I'd like to discuss. Uh, the importance of enunciating. And at this time of year, you know, we've got Easter coming up. And, and what do a lot of our kids do? They they go search for Easter eggs, right? And what do we call that? We call that an Easter egg hunt. And I think it's important to say it just like that. Easter egg hunt. Because if you put those all together... It could get you in trouble. I don't follow. I think you do. Say it real fast for me, Mike. I, I want to hear you say it. I don't follow. Uh, I, I enunciate. That's the difference between you and I. Justin? It is an Easter egg hunt. Look at I you. I got it. I got it. He, he got it. Easter egg hunt. I didn't what? see. I didn't enunciate there. <laughs> got myself in trouble. No. So, But what I want to segue to in there is this apparent adult Easter egg hunt, or you, you might not have to enunciate that one. I'm not sure. But it's it's an adult Easter egg hunt. I thought it was just for adults. I'm like, I'm thinking, oh, this is just for adults, like an adult coloring book. No, it's free entry at the Boys Park Ski Slopes on March 30th. The big thing, the reason I want to bring it up is on the ad, it says light nudity encouraged. I really would like to get everyone's take on what light nudity is, because that is leaving it up to interpretation. I think somebody's going to get in trouble. So, Mike, what is your definition? What would your definition of light nudity be? What would you, if you said, I'm going to go with some light nudity, how would you be dressed? Listen, you're not a subscriber yet for my OnlyFans, so I don't know. <laughs> That's <laughs> only it's only light nudity page? Okay. I don't know. Is it free the nipple? Is it nipples only? I, I don't know. What is light nudity? I'm saying, but light, isn't, what you just call it topless? You know? Ashless you know, chaps? Like, That's light yeah. nudity. But for men, what's light nudity? I don't think men have light nudity. I'm thinking, right? risque, do we have light nudity? I, like risque? Like think of Borat in that one piece singlet bathing suit that he wore. Like I think that's considered light nudity. That is also risque. Exactly. Yes, I, will, I think it's risque. I, I will give you that. I think the like on the surface is like, oh, light nudity. Maybe maybe you want to go. But I think you have, you make that mistake when you talk about nude beaches too. Like you have to understand. Like it, your mind goes to. Oh, nude beach. Your mind goes to the best possible scenario. And it never is. <laughs> when you, and it never is. Right? And it never <laughs> is, right? You think, think about how many people you truly would want to see nude. And then realize as a man, far fewer actually want to see you nude. So I think I think that's a fair thing. So I think you should probably go to this event fairly well dressed. I'm shocked that they're holding at the at the uh, Boys Park Ski Slows, but I, I'm not, I'm not going to be there. If you go overdressed, you can always take clothes off to fit in. But if you go underdressed and don't have anything with you, you can't put anything back on. That's a problem. On that note, we're going to go to my favorite segment of this entire show. Still is. It's the, I get the most flack for it. Uh, the BLT slander came out last week. Uh, this one is called Blind Ranking. Mike gives me five, and maybe Justin this, and Alan as well, five things, and I have to rank them completely blindly. I don't know what's coming next. One through five. Let's do it, Mike. Food seemed to be a good one. Mm-hmm. Uh, I enjoy I enjoy food. We're going to stick with food. We're going to go to desserts. Okay. And there, there'll be a caveat with this. So I'm going to give you five. A ice caviar cream or a caveat? Caveat. Okay. Um, I'll enunciate caveat. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to give you five ice cream flavors. Oh, okay. It's it's ice cream in a, in a cup, right? It's There's no cone. There's no chocolate sauce. There's no whatever your favorite toppings are. There's none of that. Can I ask right, a question? Just, Can I ask a question? Yeah. Are there sure. going to be some like obscure flavors? Like, is it or just straight like, oh, it's single flavor? Are there going to be 
things inside this ice cream, just so I can put my mind in the right place as I rank these. Some of the ice cream has things inside okay. of it. Okay. Um, okay. There's nothing off the wall. They're they're pretty. There's probably one that you might not expect to be on here, but everything's pretty pretty straightforward. Okay. All right. All right. Number one on the list is chocolate chip cookie dough. I'm not a big chocolate chip cookie dough fan. I know it's popular. I know it's a, it's popular. My my kids love it, but I'll I'll put chocolate chip cookie dough at four for me. I think that's safe. It's not going to be last on this list. It's okay. I just don't. I never crave it. Justin, box cookie dough is number one. Woo. Coming out hot. Coming out hot. Nothing's going to top hot. that for you. Nothing's going to top it. Alan, we need to know. Alan. Okay, there's a lot going on here, guys. First of all, I'm sorry. You didn't enunciate. I thought you said deserts. So I had my (laughs) mind was in a completely different zone. I was ready to rank some deserts. Um, But then you threw a curveball because you said, well, now I know you said desserts, but we're only ranking ice cream flavors. That's throwing me off, too. Okay, what was the flavor? I'm sorry. I was there was a lot going on. (laughs) Chocolate chip cookie dough. Number one. There's nothing else. Everything else. Come really? after that. Let's yeah. go. Yeah, wow. Number one. I'm going to get raked over the coals Mike, and plum this week. Well? No, I don't know where, where this, I didn't actually rank these. I didn't think about it because I, I have the list in front of me. But <laughs> what are you, chocolate chip cookie dough. <laughs> <laughs> my third time. Uh, so <laughs> chocolate chip cookie dough, it depends because there's two ways to make chocolate chip cookie dough. It's straight vanilla with co- chocolate chip cookie dough or they add in, which I really like that. So that would be like probably two for me. But there's also variants of chocolate chip cookie dough that has dark chocolate chips in it. And I hate dark chocolate more than anything else. And if it's in there, it ruins it. And it would be like seven on my list. We're going with the original one. That second one doesn't exist. Just just the first right. one. Then it'd be yeah. probably two. We're going Turkey Hill cookie dough. And yeah. it's, a, it's a little hint of brown sugar in there. That's all you need. All right. All right. Number two. Dairy Queen swirl cone. So it's half vanilla, half chocolate. Yet. I've already used four. <laughs> I mean, that's so plain. I do like a good twist or swirl, whatever you want to call it. But oh, man, I think it's that's called twist. You're right. Yeah. Def- uh, yeah. Twist. At least I'm right about that plum. I am right about that plum. Don't don't get on me. Uh, wow. I, I would I would actually take that over uh, cookie dough, though. So I'll, I'll go three. I'm a simple man. I, it's obvious. I want it's to put that taste. at five, but I won't. So I'll put it at four. Alan, you, you knew here? You're third. I'm going to put it at five. <laughs> Since Justin doesn't have the gall, <laughs> I'm going to put it at five. I want to, but I know he's going to come out with something worse than that. You don't have what it takes. <laughs> As a blanket statement, it's my number one. There's one ice cream I like more than it, but it's very specific. So it's And it's not in the list. But it is classic chocolate vanilla. You start to swirl them around together so you get a little bit in every bite. It you can't go wrong on a, on the the classic Dairy Queen cone. It's beautiful. It, the dude has the palate of a child. I mean, PB and J, uh, number one. We've I'm right got there with him, though. twist. I'm right there with. <laughs> Listen, him. there there were some moms this weekend who were pissed that you had peanut butter and jelly solo. It is fantastic. He's right. I'm firing up the mom, the plum plum moms. <laughs> are, they, are they plum moms? Or are they other just like? Multi district. No, they were plum moms. Like they, uh. they were legit mad. Like I thought I was going to get something thrown at me, and I said, "Listen, I had it high. It was Drew. I'll give you his address. Go throw stuff at him." Ooh, all right. Me and Jay right. one, by the way. Just saying. Oh my. <clears throat> just saying. And you all put back into parking spots. You don't turn into them. You savage. Well, everyone, Justin's first and last appearance on <laughs> Sour Plums. <laughs> <laughs> all right, number three is. Peanut butter swirl. Now, peanut butter. There's two different kinds of peanut butter swirl, so I'll let you pick which one you want. It's but it's it's basic vanilla or chocolate ice cream with chunks of peanut butter in it. Five. I don't like peanut butter and ice cream. I'll go three. Uh, I'm gonna keep it at three. I'm going with four for PB swirl. Four. Like Mike has his high number four because I don't like peanut butter either. But this is my one. It's overall three for me. Peanut butter swirl is delicious. I love it, but. Penn State Creamery, peanut butter swirl. I, I paid $90 to bring two tubs of it home today from, from the creamery at Penn State. It is the best ice cream on the face of the planet. 
Yeah. We should we should move on. Number four. Cookies and cream. Ooh. Oh. Of all the things you said so far, that's number one for me. And I only have one or two left, right? Or no? One, Just yeah, one after this. One after I'll one. go one because I, 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 I'm going to go one. I, li- I like a good cookies and cream. I really do. So while I'm not an Oreos fan, I can, t- I can do cookies and cream ice cream. So I'm putting it at two. I'll put mine at two also. It's safe to me. I feel like most yeah. people at least can't really like, it, like an Oreo. Yeah. Yeah. I have it at, at four only because I know what's coming. <laughs> um, it, it, it's one of my least favorite ice creams. I'll eat it. Like I don't not like it, but I feel like when I was a kid, I had it so much. I'm just sick of it now. That's fair. But it's not bad. But I do love Oreos. They're my favorite. One of my favorite foods. If people are wondering why I look the way I do, it's because this is what I love. <laughs> I feel like cookies is definitely going to happen on this on this segment someday. Oh, it's it's already it's yeah. already teed up. I, I feel like I got to get away from food after this week though for a couple of weeks. All right, last one: mint chocolate chip. Oh, this is perfect for me. I uh, it's two because I have to. I don't. I'm not a huge huge fan. Uh, of it, but it's two because I'm stuck. So if I could put it at 105, I would, but it's at five yeah. because it's my last one. I don't want toothpaste in my ice cream. Thank you. He said that before. I can tell. Okay, he <laughs> said that before about mint chocolate chip, but it's it's refreshing. It's light, and you get a little chocolate in there. It's three. I would have put it there regardless, even if you gave it earlier. And apparently, you don't have to brush your teeth after you have it at night. So no, you should, <laughs> but. <laughs> You should brush your teeth. <laughs> Justin, I forgot you and I agree on this because I despise mint chocolate chip. <clears throat> we were, don't, don't want to keep going back to Penn State, we were at the creamery today, but and <clears throat> Jess and I were going to uh, split a, a shake to go. We were going to get a peanut butter swirl milkshake. They, When I was in school, they made it, milkshakes out of any flavor, and all of a sudden they stopped it. They only make it out of four flavors a day now, apparently. So we, I was like, oh, that's all right. I won't get anything. Figuring well, she'll just get a cup of, mint, of peanut butter swirl and we'll share it. She threw an audible and got a mint chocolate chip milkshake. And I looked at her with so much disgust in my face. And she's like, what? And I said, there's no way I'm I'm taking any of that. Like, so you got the whole thing now. And I was I was beyond pissed. <laughs> wow. You know what? You, you mentioned a shake. So can I interject here? I mean, I guess I have the floor, right? The shakes that Arby's makes with the Andes mints, that is like a chocolate and mint done perfectly for me. And I will, I no will. Such thing. I will enjoy an Andy's mint chocolate whatever shake from Arby's. I will I will enjoy you, that. You just lost me because mint and chocolate <laughs> do not go together. Ever. Ever. Ooh. In ever? any situation. Ever. No. No situation uh. does that happen. Ever. Wow. You know you know what I've never never said while I'm eating a Hershey's bar is man, I wish I was brushing my teeth right now. Like and I think Justin <laughs> just said the same thing, right? But but it it just it's disgusting. There is no reason. That have, it should be a flavor, let alone having us rank it as a flavor. Have you had an Andy's mint? Drew, yes. Speak up. Why Drew, can... speak up. Defend this. I'm, I mean, have you ever had an Andy's <laughs> mint? I mean, do you know when you, you get after dinner mints? Do you know what they give you at Olive Garden? Uh, you, you probably don't go to Olive Garden because you're Italiano. You don't you don't believe in Olive Garden. I, I, I do, but I don't eat and nothing with red sauce there. I'll get other stuff. Okay, that's fair. But they give you an their after dinner mint is an Andy's mint. It is the preferred mint of Drew Barto. Well, again, you're wrong. So. <laughs> I, there we I have are. a feeling I'm going to hear about it being wrong <laughs> a lot again this wrong. week. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel mint chocolate chip, you either love it or you hate it. And and I feel yeah. whatever side you're on, people feel very strongly about it. I don't or care just about mint chocolate chip. I just want yeah, mint I chocolate want, in general. I want the people of Plum to show me some love for once and support me in my, my love for Andy's mints. Well, you'll get, love, you'll get love in my household because I'm the minority. Yes, I said that. Um, <laughs> and a little too on the nose there, Justin. <laughs> and my family loves mint chocolate chip. Shanna loves Andy candies. I want none of that. So you'll be. I was in the middle of a side. marital dispute with them. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for it. I hope they're, I hope they're as vocal about that as they were last week about things they disagree with me on. So how we do, Mike? I mean, that's. You obviously you hated mine. No, I don't think I hated yours. I didn't agree with cookies and cream. It was too high for me. Peanut butter swirl, way too low. But I think I think everybody had pretty good lists this week, except Alan. He's wrong with the mint chocolate. I just I just disagree. It's I think awful. Alan has symmetry with someone every week, and I I kind of like that because him <laughs> and I were vibing this week. We we were pretty close. He and I were vibing last week, so that worked out really well for me. I liked I liked you better last week, Alan. I still like you, but <laughs> better last week. Yeah, yeah. I said I only agree with you when I do agree with you. That's not what I had planned, but that's fine. 
<laughs> That's what you signed up for, but he's going to go. Too bad. Too bad. <laughs> I think it's time to move on to our uh, next segment. Do we have any voicemails this week? We do. Before we get to voicemails, we have uh, TV repair from Mario Francesco. If it's broken, it still won't work, but give him a call. <laughs> Again, thank you, Mario, for sponsoring this episode. <laughs> a great sponsor. You know what, right, I would like go. to point out, you know what, Mike, we've, this episode's been going on for quite a while, so I would like to point out again that this episode is sponsored by, in addition to Mario Francesco Corporation, uh, it's Tresco Concrete, Continental Comb, and the Gen Mascaro team. Thank you for your sponsorship. Continental Comb Barbershop, a traditional barbershop servicing the area since 1973. Up to date on all the new styles and cuts. Call 412-795-7555 and mention Sour Plums. For $5 off any service. Tresco Concrete. The best concrete products on the market. Ready mix concrete delivered to your door, guaranteed to get hard or your money back. And as always, their concrete is all natural, no supplements, and always 100% Viagra free. The Gen Mascaro team proudly supports the Sour Plums podcast. When it comes to selling your home promptly and at peak value, look no further than the expertise of the Gen Mascaro team. With over a decade of industry experience, we guarantee to guide you seamlessly through the process. For personalized assistance, contact us at 412-607-6318 or email jen.mascaro at cbrealty.com. All right, only one voicemail this week. Uh, we've heard from this guy before, but I'm going to go ahead and play this. Hey guys, this is Joe McBride, long-time listener. Uh, just a quick question. When the new sheets open, do you think the old sheets should stay open or you think it should open a couple more sheets? See what you guys think. Thanks a lot. Have a good one. Bye. Jimmy McBride making a trifecta. He's been on every episode in some form or fashion. I've got to. I've got to say this. It's it's funny to me because, like, my youngest kid is she's six, and she'll ask that question about are they going to close the other sheets or we're going to have two sheets. But then you hop onto a Plum community page of any variety. You have adults asking that question, and that blows my mind. <laughs> Clearly, they're going to close the small sheets, Plum. That's and Jimmy, they are going to close it. They're not going to add another one. Uh, this is going to be the sheets to end all sheets in Plum, except for that one that may be in Plum over on the Oakmont side. Uh, but but yes, <laughs> Jimmy, they're going to close the small sheets. What I heard they're putting in with existing sheets is Cracker Barrel. Cracker Barrel. Yes. Cracker yeah. Barrel. Well, they're going to have three tables in there. That's how, that's how big that It'll building is. The <laughs> smallest one ever, but Cracker Barrel will be there <laughs> with a car wash out back. I thought somebody local was, uh, weren't they opening that and running that? I can't remember who it was. I saw it on the page, but I can't remember who was supposed to run that. The new Cracker Barrel? Oh, yeah. I thought she was hiring a think- woman. She was hiring. I think she was <laughs> just doing the hiring. Oh. Um, oh. M- Men Jescaro. No, that's not it. Men Jescaro. I forget who like it that. was. Oh, I did see her tagged. I did see Jen Mascaro tagged as the. Oh, yeah. that's that's it. That's it. The hiring. <laughs> she's a she's a Jill of all trades. I mean, she's doing a lot. Real estate <laughs> recruitment. <laughs> all right, let's let's move on. Jimmy, congratulations on making this episode as many times as the hosts have. I I uh, do have a question. Okay. Do, do you think? Do you think Joe DiMaggio or Jimmy McBride will have a longer streak? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with uh, Jimmy McBride. He's on. He's. I think he's gonna beat it. He's I relentless. Agree. Although Mario Francesco has also been mentioned on all three episodes. So. Mm. Oh, that's true. So it might be a ooh, neck and neck thing. Maybe maybe Mario is is like the Superman references on Seinfeld. We will work him into every show. There was also a lot of like Porsche Easter eggs. So Jimmy could be like the Porsche. That's a bad analogy. <laughs> all right, let's 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 move on. Now. Mike, you may shout outs at all this week. Plum shout outs. I do. I, I do. I just have one quick one. Uh, I mentioned several times that I was at Penn State this weekend. Plum PBBO fourth through uh, sixth grade was up at the state uh, tournament this weekend, the state middle school championship. Ooh. These kids put in work all year long. Uh, you to actually. So I don't know if anybody here has gone through this but this is a pretty legit tournament it's at the end of the day i think it's a money maker a lot of them are but they actually take the time to verify each kid that they are from the same school district in the same grade that you have to submit all kind of paperwork to verify all these kids but in order to get to the state tournament you have to win or take second place in a qualifying tournament or win a qualifying league uh lily's team she was here she said hi to carl earlier Today she was she's not going to be on the show, but she was there. She was very excited to, to meet him. Uh, her team, 
just went up there, went two and two this weekend. The sixth grade team, they qualified uh, later in the season a couple weeks ago. They got in. Uh, they went two and two this weekend. And it's a great, great time for them. They get to play teams from across the state that they normally wouldn't see. Uh, teams that have also, you know, been successful in their season as well. And uh, the boys fifth grade, t- or, I'm sorry, boys sixth grade team is going up next weekend. So good luck to them next weekend. They'll they'll be done by the time this episode actually airs. So hopefully they have good news to share as well. But uh, all the hard work. Uh, basketball season is such a long season. These kids put in so much work over the season. Um, so kudos to all of them, boys and girls, and all the coaches that put all their time in. Uh, to coach them, it's it's awesome to have Plum represented at the state level on a on a such a big stage for basketball. Uh, you you stole my shot, but congratulations to, to everyone competing in that. My son had the opportunity to go last year uh, as part of the seventh grade Plum team last year. However, he broke his arm uh, a couple weeks before that and uh, and couldn't play. But we went out and supported the team. It was a lot of fun to go out and hang out with your teammates. Uh, I think you forget a little bit about that when you're when you're going through this process of playing basketball and being part of a team like there's still that time to hang out with your buddies and, and do those things because man that stuff's super important that's the stuff you remember too so uh congratulations to all the plum teams that are being represented out there uh before we go i want to thank justin for for joining us at the tail end of our episode and hanging out with carl krauser what a, what a great night that was how about it fantastic i appreciate the invite it was cool uh seeing carl haven't seen him for a while so it's good to see him catch up a little bit again and i appreciate being a part of the podcast and and alan thank you for being our fearless producer who did not agree with me very much this week. So we could probably change that next week. Again, thanks for having me. Uh, I guess this is a (laughs) trial basis. Uh, I will say, though, something in your favor. Let me just look at my notes here. Not that I'm keeping tally, not that the points matter, but technically Drew was right tonight. He corrected Mike on the, the DQ swirl. You corrected him with the DQ twist. So I fact checked my co host. Of everything that being said tonight, you were right. Nice. You hear that, Plum? I was right. <laughs> First time for everybody. Is, is right. Alan's last show, I, I think. Is that what it is? <laughs> Thank you for listening to Sour Plum. Like this episode, subscribe to our channel on SoundCloud, Spotify, or YouTube. And yes, we're working on Apple Podcasts. It's just a bit of a pain in the ass right now. And hopefully they don't hold that against me. Share if you care. I'm Drew Barto. I'm Mike Devine. And we're out.